for your grade three and above classrooms, there is not a large selection of quality manipulatives. I will only recommend one, and that is Zoom. Zoom allows the flexibility to create something absolutely stunningly beautiful for the child. Here is a prototype Death Star. <laughs> These can be created not just by your top math students or your top art students. These are typically created by all of the students in your class. That's awesome. Very, very good. Perfect, Benji. And now have a small here. And it's the nuclear reactor. Yeah. It looks like a little. Zoom has a number of fantastic qualities, but it also has some things that you have to be careful of. If you just lay out a whole bunch of zone for students to tackle, you're going to get a large number of students who create this ridiculous star. And this is just going to take you forever to take apart. I suppose you can tell the students to take apart their own stars, but guaranteed you're going to be left with some of these at the end of some of your periods, and they have not learnt anything mathematical uh, doing this. So I don't recommend playing with the stars, letting the students do that. How do I stop that? I stop that by insisting that the students start only with sticks of the same size and blue. If you want to get more regimented, you can say, first of all, you have to build a triangle, then you have to build a square, then you have to build a pentagon, then you have to build a hexagon. You could do that, but I think that's a little bit too regimented. I, I do like you to stick with one size of blue strut, but to give them the flexibility to explore. And then you introduce uh, different colored struts um, at appropriate points. Another problem that you might have in your class is that students get reckless in disassembling their zone. The correct way to disassemble is to hold a ball, to hold a stick and a pull like this. This is the correct way to disassemble. However, some students get lazy. They will twist to get rid of a one and of course then we destroy it and we are left with a totally destroyed stick and the ball is also damaged. So we don't want to do that. Other times you might have kids jumping on top of them and that's just gonna destroy it <laughs> even more. We don't want to see that. The most common issue with zone construction is that kids, for example, trying to make a square, will put on a piece like this and they'll this is quite extreme, but nevertheless, this shows a typical problem. They force it, okay? You can see that it's forced because we have this highly stressed stick here. Don't put zone sticks where they don't want to go. And this zone stick does not want to go to this ball over here. So that's a lesson that your students have to learn if they're going to create beautiful zone objects. Zoom is fantastic for showing students the connection between mathematics and beauty. But there's other connections that Zoom is really good for. First, that I'm going to show you is uh, the Fibonacci connection. So here we have a long stick, which is the same length as the two sticks of the next smallest size. And this stick is the same length as the sum of the two sticks of the smaller size. That's a great way to introduce the golden ratio to your grade nine students or to talk about Fibonacci with your grade four students. Another connection between zone and mathematics. This is a truncated octahedron and there's 24 vertices on it. That's interesting because 24 is equal to four factorial. Is there any way that we could label these vertices with permutations of one, two, three, and four? That's what we're going to do now. We're going to label this vertex 2, 1, 3, 4. We're going to swap the first two. 
we're going to label this vertex by switching the last two. So that would be one, two, four, three. And we're going to label the last vertex on that upper square, we're going to label that, guess what, two, one, four, three. So you can see that going around that square, we are either switching the first two digits or the last two digits. What about going around a hexagon? Each time that you step to a neighboring vertex, you have to switch the order of two numbers that are side by side in your permutation. Treat this as a class exercise. You might as well fill up the entire truncated octahedron. And this will give you a great chance to link different areas of mathematics, geometry with permutations. William Rowan Hamilton, one of my clan members, came up with an ingenious game that asked you to find a cycle around a dodecahedron so that you visited each one of the vertices once and you didn't cross your path. A solution is relatively easy to discover. Here I started with a white ball and I'm adding blue struts to complete the cycle. Schools might consider combining their art and math budgets. Zoom is a fantastic framework for paper mache, but that's another video. I'm highly recommending Zoom. It's a huge mess in the home. <laughs> there will be broken parts everywhere that your husband don't, is not going to pick it up. Don't listen to my wife. So I highly don't listen to my do wife. not recommend no. this no. kind of thing. <laughs>